Welcome Travel Nation. Considering a trip to India, today I take you to Mumbai to explore this eclectic city. Coming up. Travel Nation to the Traveling Cheese Head. In this episode, we explore Mumbai, India. I am Cheese Head Girl, and if we're just meeting, welcome to my channel. This channel is dedicated to you, the independent traveler. Each week, I will take us on an adventure to somewhere I've explored and share the experiences and lessons learned from traveling to that destination. Be sure to subscribe below to see where I take us next. So Mumbai, India is a vast city that is heavily, heavily populated. It was quite an experience. It was my first international trip back in 2005. And on top of just exploring Mumbai itself, I was also meeting my husband's entire family for the very first time. So I had a little added pressure. So because of this, I did not stay in a normal hotel or anything like that. I stayed in my husband's parents' home um, in Malad. So I got to really experience what it's like to live in Mumbai and experiences as somebody who lives in Mumbai, which was kind of cool coming from a completely different culture. So my first few days there was all about, we were celebrating our wedding and having a traditional Indian style wedding there. So the first few, probably about a week of my visit was really about preparations for that. Um, in that, I learned some really cool things about how uh, the people of Mumbai live and the people of India live. So I arrived in Mumbai in mid-September and this happened to fall right during Gampati Festival, which is celebrated every single year. What it is, just to give you some perspective, um, Gampati is the elephant god, and he is the remover of all obstacles. Now, he is a huge festival, especially in Mumbai. There are Gampati pop-up temples, is the best way I can describe them, um, all over the city, and even in certain, in like the communities. So, like where my husband's parents stayed in their community in the park area they set up a kind of like a pop-up temple with a very large uh gumpity idol at the end all of the gumpities are taken with a procession so each gumpity has its own procession with drums and depending on how large the idol is some of them are so large that they're moved in lorries or semi trucks throughout the city. And it is almost like a bunch of little parades going on all over the city and they all converge on Chapati Beach. And once there, uh, they submerge these idols into the sea. But it's it was really cool to see. It was uh, the first time I was there, I arrived and really like almost the next day was when the Gempati Festa was going on. I'm gonna show some pictures here that, um, from our balcony, uh, there's a procession that was going by and it was really cool to kind of just see that and the drums playing and everything. Um, but that was happening around the city that entire day. Now, I did happen to snag a newspaper. So, so I'll show you here. So as you can see, this is Gumpati. I'm gonna bring that a little bit closer. And that's one of the idols that they are submerging into the water. I'm gonna back out a little bit. Um, but it was just really, really neat to be a part of that and be there during that time. Um, so that festival is celebrated in the month of September every single year. So if you are able to go at that time, usually the rainy season is ending and it's starting to dry out and become warmer again. Um, so just some tips about when you should travel to Mumbai, because I can tell you that, um, India, at least in Mumbai, it's a very subtropical, so it has a rainy season, it has a dry season, and it has an intense heat season. 
Um, Mumbai is always hot, don't get me wrong, it's always humid, but there are different times of year that are better to go than others. And I've been at a couple different times of year. Like I mentioned, I've been in September, and September, October has been a good time to go. It, the weather's been a little bit more pleasant. I mean, still hot, still humid, um, but it's been, it hasn't been as rainy. Uh, usually the rainy months are June through, usually the end of August um, is fairly rainy. Sometimes it like leaks into September a little bit. Um, and it is it is very rainy, like rainforest rainy. Um, so it is frequent downpours, constant days of rain. It makes for a very slushy, messy uh, commute through the city and makes it more difficult to take some beautiful pictures um, for sure. But, you know, so try to avoid those months if you can. It will be cheaper to go during those times as far as airfares go and things like that because tourism is down during those months but just be aware it's down for a reason. It's not pleasant to travel during the rainy season. Mumbai is subject to flooding sometimes and that can cause a lot of headaches uh, as people try to move around the city. So another time to go um, is really in December, January, February. It's a lot cooler. Um, it's considered winter there, but it just, it gets down to like the, upper 70s, low 80s. So it's much nicer and then at night it gets cool. Now the hottest time of the year, May is a very, very hot month and April it really kind of gets hot as well. Um, but May is definitely the hottest month. Now in Mumbai, in May is uh, mango season. Now there's a certain type of mango that is grown only in Mumbai and it only becomes ripe in May. So if you get to go, it's the king of mangoes. Everybody in Mumbai will know what you're talking about. They're kind of yellow and smaller, um, but they are the sweetest, most wonderful mango um, that is available on the planet. Now I might be biased and the people of Mumbai are certainly biased, but you cannot even find this mango in other parts of India. Um, I know when we traveled down to Bangalore the one time, we brought a whole case of these mangoes down to his relatives that live in Bangalore because they're not available there. So if you're in Mumbai in May, while it will be ungodly hot for you, you're gonna get to taste the sweetest mangoes on the face of the planet. So enjoy that. After the wedding and ceremonies were over, we got to explore the city. Now my husband grew up in this city, so it was really cool to have kind of um, an inside guide to the city. Sometimes when you grow up in a large city, you take for granted all of the tourist sites. You don't get out and go see them. And my husband was the same way. So as much as you would think it would be a huge help to have somebody who grew up there, it really wasn't because he wasn't seeing Mumbai through my eyes uh, as a Westerner trying to explore this city for the first time. So there are certain sites that are very traditionally touristy. Um, especially down um, near Chuchigit, um, Queen's Necklace area. Uh, those are where any tour to India will take you if you're gonna be having a stop in Mumbai. Um, Mumbai is not actually a huge tourist stop. Um, it has a lot of heritage, it has a lot of culture, but it doesn't have the number of temples and historic sites that some other areas of the country have. But if you get to a chance to stop in Mumbai, it is an incredible experience. It is the home of Bollywood, and you can actually take Bollywood tours uh, to Movie City, to Bollywood City, and sometimes if you're lucky, if it's in season, you can actually watch some of the uh, movies being shot. Um, that is a city that you do need to sometimes coordinate some guided tours um, because it's not as easy just to plan it yourself. Now for us, we hired a car uh, to take us around for a day and the car comes with a driver and then we kind of listed out the areas that we wanted to see and then also asked um, him to suggest or recommend some things that we might not have thought of. So, like I mentioned earlier, one of the main things we went down to see is we went down to 
uh, Queen's Necklace or Marine Drive. Uh, that's where Chapauti Beach is, and it is a very, very tourist area. Unfortunately, it was raining that day, um, but we still had a great time. There is also the Gateway of India there, which is great for photos and a definite must stop on any trip to Mumbai. Now, a great vantage point uh, to get some really great views of Chapauti Beach and of the city itself, Queen's Necklace Marine Drive, is to go up to the Hanging Garden. Now, it is just a garden. There's nothing super spectacular. Um, it is pretty, um, but the best part of it is the views of downtown Mumbai. It's a great vantage point to take some photos and have a great overview of the city. Now, also down by the Gateway of India is the Taj Mahal Hotel. It is a beautiful historic hotel and has been there for a very long time. I don't even know how long. It's You are more than welcome to go inside and tour around. It, lots of celebrities have stayed there when they have visited Mumbai, um, but it, the architecture is beautiful as well. So it's a great stop uh, since you're in that area anyway. It's literally across the street from the uh, Gateway of India. So you can do the two in one stop. Now, a stop that uh, we were taken to, but I would recommend skipping, unless you're really, really into museums, is the Prince of Wales Museum. Now, the architecture of the building is beautiful. It's great for a photo op outside the building if you want that colonial architecture that Mumbai is known for. Go ahead and snap some photos. Now, I did not feel it was worth my time. I'm not a big museum goer, uh, so I wanted to explore the city. My husband and I kind of walked around the streets and explored the neighborhood. Now, Mumbai has a lot of beaches because obviously it's right on the ocean front. So Juhu Beach is another great spot, especially if you are adventurous and may want to try some of that roadside food. Now, I've never done it because I tend to have a bit of a sensitive stomach when it comes to those kinds of things. Um, but hey, there's a ton of eateries there. It's also a very festive area. A lot of Mumbakers go there at uh, sunset to watch the sunset as well as to just relax and unwind at the end of the day. So it tends to have a pretty festive atmosphere. And if you get a chance, it's a great place to go. Another great temple to visit is the city of Nevayak temple. I'm probably saying that completely wrong because <laughs> my pronunciation is awful. Um, but I will put a link down below so you can go check that out. It's a beautiful temple. It's a very historic temple and it has a great view of the Haja Ali. The Haja Ali, you really can't go to it. It is in the middle of the water, um, but it is a, a Muslim mosque that is in the middle of the water um, in the bay there like you can't visit it really but you can um, see it and it's quite a sight to see it looks like it's floating out in the middle of the bay now Mumbai is known for its trains India really is known for its trains and one of the coolest uh, terminals is the Victoria terminus it is a beautiful architecture and it's one of the busiest terminuses throughout Mumbai it's a great place to people watch and to see the chaos that is uh, the commuter train system. I don't recommend you ride the train, but it's great to watch all of that chaos happening, people co going and coming from work and from home. Uh, so if you can get down there during rush hour, it's kind of cool to sit back and watch all of that happening. Another wonderful place to go that is kind of quiet and scenic, even in this huge city of Mumbai, is the Bandra Worli Seawall. It is a great place to hang out. It's right along the water, has great views of Queen's Necklace and other areas of Mumbai. And it's again, right on the seafront. So it's really a nice area to just kind of hang out for an afternoon and relax. One other great temple to go to is the Mahalakshmi Temple. It's a beautiful temple. It is very historic again. Um, it does draw a large audience, so it is tends to be quite crowded. Um, but it does have beautiful architecture again, as well as the idols being uh, absolutely gorgeous. Um, just follow along if you're going to a temple. You do need to dress a little bit more conservative. Um, me having bare shoulders in a temple would not be acceptable. Uh, you do need to cover your shoulders and you'll be fine. Now we get to shopping. So one of the best areas to go shopping and kind of 
really fun and eclectic places to go shopping is called Fashion Street. It is really, the best way I can describe it, it's kind of like a flea market, um, but it's there I think pretty much every day. And there are just a bunch of little booths and shops all the way along the way selling all different types of clothing and merchandise, handbags, everything like that shoes even um, it is a barter's paradise you like don't pay whatever price they tell you barter 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 but it's really fun there because most of the stuff is reasonably priced and you can get pick up some really great souvenirs for a low cost now no trip to Mumbai would be complete without taking in a true Bollywood movie. The cinema is still alive and well in Mumbai and is very popular among locals. It tends to be reasonably priced and there are a variety of movies going on any given day. So find yourself, usually they're in the bigger shopping malls is where a lot of the theaters are. And if you go to one of the shopping malls, you go ahead and get yourself a ticket. You don't need to understand the language in order to understand the story. One of my favorite experiences was going to see um, a Bollywood movie in Hindi, and I, I loved it. It was so cool to watch the story unfold. And even though there was a bit of a language thing going on there where I couldn't understand word for word what they were saying, I understood the overall story, and it was really a great experience to see and to watch. So another tip for Mumbai especially is, while the tourist locations are great to check out, and definitely shouldn't be missed. You also want to make sure that you get into the neighborhoods a little bit. Now, you do have to be careful. You don't want to go to the bad neighborhoods or the rough areas. You don't necessarily want to go hang out in the slums for a day, but there are certain neighborhoods in Mumbai that are pretty nice to walk around and explore. Uh, where I stayed in Malad West uh, was very safe and, and full of parks and areas to walk around. Um, and then there was also um, Gorgon is another area that is a little bit more of a shopping district. So you're gonna find more of the shopping malls, street markets, and mom and pop shops in Gorgon. Uh, but it's a great way to kind of experience the culture and just kind of blend in with what's going on with you, uh, around you. Um, you can go to restaurants, eateries, and things like that to try out the local cuisine and uh, have just a really great day just exploring some of those neighborhoods. And finally, as part of the exploration of the neighborhoods, you need to get in an auto rickshaw and just take a ride. It is quite an experience uh, because the traffic is really crazy and these drivers, I don't know how they do it, but they maneuver th with like inches between them and the car next to them. Uh, it is really quite a crazy experience to see. Now throughout this video, you've been seeing that I've been posting some pictures of my experience in Mumbai. I've been there several times now. Um, so I've tried to do a comp compilation of those different trips um, of the pictures that I've seen. So on one of my last trips to Mumbai, they had built a new bridge um, going across from Bandra to, I think it goes to um, near the Chapati area, near Chichigit, but it's a beautiful bridge. Um, there's no traffic because there are tolls to go across it, um, but there's some, it's a very pretty bridge, great pictures that you can take as you're crossing it. You can't really stop um, to take photos, but you can take photos while you're driving across it. Um, and it, it is just a really neat uh, area, very modern. It kind of tells you where Mumbai is going. Um, so the biggest thing with Mumbai that I've noticed over the years that has changed is it's gone through a lot of change. The first time I went, it was very unusual for them to see a Westerner walking around the neighborhoods. It's gotten better. Um, my last trip in 2016, I wasn't such a rarity anymore. Um, also from my first trip in 2005 until my last trip in 2016, uh, it went from being primarily mom and pop shops, especially in the neighborhoods, to converting to larger shopping centers and shopping malls. You still find a wealth of mom and pop shops out there, but there has been a definite shift to larger department stores, to larger shopping malls, as well as grocery stores that are more westernized. Uh, I like to call them as like mini Walmarts because they sell everything from like the food and vegetables 
all the way to um, you know household items. So another thing that's changed since my first trip to uh, Mumbai till my last trip in 2016, they've rebuilt an entire new terminal uh, at the airport and it is completely modernized. It's really beautiful and very, very westernized. You don't feel like you're landing in Mumbai. Um, it feels like you're landing in an airport in any part of the Western world. And they've systemized the taxi systems a lot better. So that doesn't mean you can't get scammed because you absolutely can. Do not accept a ride from anybody unless you've gone to the taxi stand because you purchase your ticket at the taxi stand and then they assign you a taxi driver. It's a preset price. You shouldn't have random strangers coming up to you and offering you a ride saying that they're a taxi and that they'll give you a good deal. You don't know where they're gonna take you and you don't know the city well enough at that point, so just don't do it. Go to the taxi stand. It's very structured now, it's very uh, legitimized, so make sure you do your diligence. Don't think you're gonna be saving a couple bucks by getting a ride from some random stranger. You have to be careful. There are still people there trying to scam and make a quick buck off of an unwitting tourist. So just be the smart one and know that you should go directly to the taxi stand. But get ready, Mumbai is such a vibrant city with such a historic culture and it's just a sight to see. It's a great stopping point or ending point on any trip to India. The flights there are quite frequent and the airport, like I said, is beautiful. And the accommodations, there's a wealth of accommodations throughout Mumbai. So just have a great trip and really enjoy and soak in everything that that city has to offer. I want to hear about your trip to India once you've gone. I want to hear about your impressions of Mumbai and I hope this video has helped. I hope I've provided some insights on things to see, things to do, and places to go throughout the wonderful city of Mumbai. Stay tuned for my next video where I will explore Goa and talk to you not only about my first trip to Goa, but my second trip to Goa uh, a few years later. Don't forget to subscribe so you uh, can know when my next video is coming out. Ring that bell so you get that notification. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, as well as Facebook. I look forward to catching up with you, Travel Nation. Until next time, I'm the Traveling Cheesehead. Have a great time. See you next time.